Hey there, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out my video and welcome to my weekly wrap up. So as I've explained before, I read far too many books <laughs> to really be able to do a decent, I think, monthly wrap up. I am going to do like kind of like a tying a bow on the month kind of video, I think, just saying this is how much I read. But this actually gives me the opportunity to give a little bit of like input, get a minute or two of content on my thoughts about a book. And I think that's something I would more enjoy doing. And I think as someone who does look at a lot of booktube videos and all that stuff, that is something I more enjoy over doing like 20 minute long analytical videos about books, because sometimes I feel like that takes away from the fun of it as a reader and as a watcher. So this week, I actually had a really good reading week. I read a total of five books. One of them was out the help of an audio book, but I did follow along with the other ones. I really enjoyed all of them, to be honest. I think the lowest rating I gave was like a three and a half or a four stars. So the first book that I read is Before She Ignites by Jodi Meadows. I'll link all of my reviews that are on my blog in the description box down below. I ended up giving this four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I liked the relationship between the main character and the dragons. Like it really showed a lot of like her compassion and love. And she came off as a little bit naive. It's a very political heavy kind of book. And it's definitely a setup to lots of chaos that is going to be in the next two books, I assume, at least the next book for sure. And she, yeah, she comes off very naive, but you can see that she does. It's not because she's been like totally, she has cares and feels for people and she has allegiances she just hasn't been exposed and has been very particularly with intent by the people who are controlling her to keep her sheltered from exactly what is going on and she slowly begins to realize a lot of this stuff and takes 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 charge of it and keeps to her morals and sees that there are problems in the way that she was raised and kind of goes forward my only kind of nitpicky issues that really did bring it down from a five to a four were there is this kind of, I really like it when books do this. They do kind of alternating chapters between like, they explain the present day problem and then do like a historically chapter and then kind of show you when that problem started or whatever. And it does it and then it, for like the first third or so, and then it just abruptly stops, which was very odd to me to do that. I think you either need to kind of continue it or you know just don't do it or like kind of have them as like flashbacks instead of separate chapters it was just very very odd and the flashbacks were extremely short like they were one or two pages which was a little bit weird considering the rest of the chapters were like 20 to 30 pages so i wasn't totally crazy about that part the character also has this habit of when she has events happen she likes to evaluate things and put like lists and they actually do have them like displayed as a list in the book but they changed the font, but they don't make it actually look like her handwritten letter, which was, again, just very weird. I don't know why they chose to do that. I would have appreciated it if they had made it look like an actual letter or just kept the same font. It was just kind of a weird breakaway from the rest of the format, and I didn't really see the point of it because it didn't really add anything to it. One thing I didn't really totally understand, though, like, even though I just physically read it, I couldn't even get distracted because it was an audiobook or anything. So one of the, like, villains in the book, Alton, is, like, very vilified. He's very clearly, like, not a good person or presented to any way be considered a good person in this book. But I didn't quite understand why, because they seem to be fighting for the same end goal. I, it, it was just kind of half explained in how they are like different parts of society. He's kind of like a part of an organization. And then other than her being like a prisoner and him being a guard, which again, wouldn't really justify the way that the relationship is, I didn't quite get that. So I feel like it could have done a better job of maybe explaining that. My big, big plus with this book was it is extremely diverse in terms of cast. The main character is also exactly what is she is described in the book as what she's portrayed on the cover. I find it infuriating when publishers have very clearly just not read the book or just totally ignore the entire point of having a diverse cast and then slap just a very generic person on the front. Don't write a book or don't, don't let your book, I don't even know who's really to blame. I hate it when a book has, you know, a, a diverse cast, African American characters, Latin American, whatever they are, and then they put like a white ginger on the cover. That, it just takes away from the book. This gets me into the book. I can start imagining them and get in, involved in it. I really did love all of the characters. It's a diverse cast. There's lots of chaos. My only like other suggestion would be, I wish there was a little bit more explanation as well as to like the Norse stones magic thing, because it was kind of just like, started chaos and I couldn't really follow exactly what was going on. 
that and the dragons. I just want to see more of the dragons, and I think that's going to come along. I could see why it would be difficult to put the dragons in, just because of, like, the problem that has caused the beginning of this book. I don't want to give anything away. I feel like even maybe, like, instead of, like, cutting off all those, like, flashback chapters, maybe put more chapters in it with her interacting with dragons. That maybe would have given me a little bit more more love for the book and maybe bumped it up to a five stars. The next book that I read this week was The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. This was a fun book. I ended up giving it five out of five stars. It's not like a groundbreaking theme to topic covered book or anything like that. It is a retelling of the Scrooge story. I read it for the Life and Lit group in for the Fish Out of Water challenge. I don't really celebrate any sort of like holidays and this is, I'm, I'm aware of the story, but I honestly don't know if I've ever actually read the Scrooge. I just know like the Donald Duck kind of concept. And I don't even really remember the movies and like the TV show adaptations. I know I've watched them, but I didn't really remember much of them. So the concept of this book is the main character, Holly, is, goes through the, the ghosts show up for her because she's not a great person. And she ends up failing and not like con not not going Scrooge at the end of it and like fixing everything. So she essentially gets recruited to be one of the ghosts. And it's like a corporation set in New York. And once every year they pick one person to focus on to try and f help them, you know, see the light. And the book was fun. The main character, Holly, like she does, you see this transition of her, but she doesn't lose who she was. It doesn't sound like, it doesn't seem like she was totally rewritten. It was a quick book. Um, I think it's about three, almost 400 pages, but I kind of, I just blew through it. It was fun. There's some characters. Everyone has kind of their own distinctions and everyone has their backstories, which kind of slowly unravels. And you can kind of guess what was going to happen, but I guessed and I was wrong. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, you can think of things and you can see lines connecting and then it ended up not being the big thing at the end. I was not expecting it. So I was really happy with this book and I would absolutely recommend it, especially with the holiday season. The next book that I read this week was Born Wicked by Jessica Spotswood. This is a story, kind of historical fiction. There are these three sisters, their mother has passed away, and they all have powers, and their father doesn't know. And their father is rather absent, he's working distantly within, like, the, close to the next near city or whatever. So they have to hide their powers when he's home, so that's kind of a relief for them. The main character is kind of the older sister trying to take care of them and be the motherly figure, and she's just trying to keep everyone safe while her sis siblings run around and want to practice magic. And she's also got this kind of budding romance and everything is kind of chaotic because the town is being run by this religious group of men that are, you know, anti-witch, you know, you want to, the women go disappearing when they get claimed as being witches and all that kind of stuff. So this book was really cool. I wasn't totally knowing what to expect. The old cover was really pretty and then, but I ended up getting this cover because all the hard covers with the old cover were sold out. And this cover is just like not great. It's kind of tropey to me. I don't really like it. But I actually really ended up enjoying this book. I gave it, I think, a three and a half or four stars. It has some issues, I think, with pace, but the ending really broke my heart. She ends up making, having to make like kind of a left or right and a fork in the road decision, and she wants to make the left, and you're expecting her to make the left, and things happen, and that is not an option really by the end of it. So it was a very realistic situation, I think, with siblings. Not the magical power so much, as much as I wish. But as someone with three other siblings, there were four kids in a house plus two parents and a dog. <laughs> It's, you don't all hold hands and sing kumbaya around the circle. You don't always all have each other's best intentions. No one's always selfish. And that doesn't make everyone bad. That just makes it real. And I feel like this book did a really good job of it, where a lot of YA books kind of fantasize the concept of every sibling gives up and willing to fall on their sword for every siblings, you know? There are times when you don't want to do that, and I think this book did actually a good job of that. I'm really excited to read the second book. I'm going to probably try and pick the second book up in December. The second to last book that I read this week was Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. And this is the first book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper trilogy, I believe it's supposed to be. I ended up giving this one a five out of five stars or four and a half or something like that, but rounded up to five. This was a reread for me, actually. I remember reading it early on in the year and just being like, oh, it's a cool book. But I didn't read it because I wanted it. I read it because it was in my pile and I just wanted to get through it. I'm really glad I gave it a reread. The main character, Audrey Rose, is adorable. And I think... 
what I really I love strong female characters especially in historical fiction but you read them and the things they say and do sometimes you're like the, you kind of get detached and you're like this would not have happened in this history I know that but this one and she makes some comments specifically of you have to learn to pick your battles and you have to learn a way to rebel against kind of societal norms in a casual passive way and then sometimes you need to take that active no and firm firm leg down and I really enjoyed that and I like that she found a character who challenged her and he challenges her as well Thomas and there is that little bit of a romance but it's not cheesy and overwhelming the only thing that I was kind of surprised with it's not so much of a focus I mean there is a little bit of like the murders and the historical fiction aspect of it but that wasn't really the focus I took away from it it was the relationships and you know there's the mystery aspect going on in the background but it was her kind of learning and developing and growing into a person of her own so I really enjoyed this and then I immediately picked up the sequel the sequel was actually the last book that I read this week and it is Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. I think I gave this one a four stars, if not five. It was just kind of a step down slightly from Stalking Jack the Ripper. I liked the setting in Romania. It was cool. It was dark. My big problem with it, and I feel like a lot of a lot of books do this, so I don't know if I'm the only one who dislikes it. I find it very frustrating when you have a first book that just builds this character up and they become strong and independent and feel like they, they feel that you can feel that they have a self-worth and then you read the sequel and that person takes four steps back and it starts off with them doing that inner questioning of like does he like me am i competent enough yes we already talked about that i want you to go from where you were in the last book and keep going up because you've already proven that you're capable of doing some things I don't know. Maybe they were trying to emphasize the way that the first book ended with like kind of the betrayal that happened. It affected her in some way, but I didn't really totally take that away. So other than that, I'm excited. I'm curious as to where the next book is going to go because it ends saying they're going to the States, but then apparently Carrie Maniscalco said online that they're not, the next book is not going to take place in the States. So I don't know. I was kind of disappointed when I heard the next one was going to be in the States. I think part of the appeal of this series is the exoticness of Europe, especially someone from North America. I want you to pick weird countries that we don't talk a lot in books. Go for Denmark or Iceland or Norway. And like, that's where I, I, can, I can learn so much from those kinds of books. So I hope that the next book is going to be just as great. There was, again, another betrayal. Again, in the just like the first book, I guessed. I was totally wrong. <laughs> and the ending was really cool, especially. I really like this book, too, because there's a couple more strong, developed female characters. And you see kind of the involvement of Thomas from being just kind of a shameless flirt in the first book to them having something potentially to base a future off of. So, yeah. So those are all the books that I read this week. Thanks for watching my video. Let me know what you read this week or if you liked or disliked any of these books in the comments down below. Also make sure to click on the description box to get my social media and all of the links to my reviews. Thanks for watching.